I was freaking out. Your channel was hacked. The entire game would be scrapped and I'd rebuild it from the ground up. You then decided to create your own indie horror game. I can't lie, like there are parts in chapter one where I get kind of teared up. Do you like speak to them like telepathically as unique geese? Meet Unique Geese, a full-time YouTuber, game developer, and college student with nearly 50 million views. He began creating Minecraft videos with his phone as a camera at just 11 years old. Today, he's known for his viral successes, such as the indie horror game Garden of Ban Ban Reincarnated, the highly anticipated horror game Indigo Park, and the two-hour Unique Geese Friday Night Funkin' mod. Let's learn how he made a viral game in just one week with no prior experience, led a team of 20 people for his mod, and is on track to make the next poppy playtime of horror games. Dang. Um, of course, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. One of the biggest questions people probably have for you is, why choose Unique Geese as a name? So I used to do content on a smaller channel back in like elementary school and junior high. And going into high school, I knew I wanted to be on the football team and try to start varsity. And I really didn't like the idea of people in the crowd knowing me as the guy that does Minecraft videos. So at one point I decided like, hey, I'm gonna come up with an entirely new name, sat in my room and I thought of a name that no one would look up. And I'm like, oh, dozens of unique geese, which I later rebranded a few years later to just unique geese because it's kind of a mouthful. But uh, yeah, it's just an entirely random name. I have no reason for the name whatsoever. That's it's quite the origin story. <laughs> <laughs> How long would you say like your entire content creation journey has been? I'd have to do the math, but I've been doing stuff since like the fifth grade and I'm a senior in college right now, but basically my entire life. Wow. So obviously 2021 was a big year for you. And of course. you might know why. <laughs> yep. Yeah, of um, course. The funny Friday Night Funkin' game that blew up the internet and your channel too. And you created a, a mod based off Unique Geese for it. So how long was the development of that entire mod? It was kind of in development hell for a while. I would say to get both updates out is probably like a two year dev time for version one and version two. If I could go back and redo that project, I would have decreased the scope of it significantly. I think it's like 30 some like kind of buggy songs. And like a lot of the stuff we were able to do was really cool, but we had all these ideas. It was too ambitious and it didn't release in a state that I'm super proud of. What would you say was like the hardest part of development? I think the most difficult thing is just keeping everyone in line and figuring out like what is rude to say to someone to get them to work on something and um, what do you need to get done by a certain time frame. Everyone on the team, I love everyone and everyone did their best and we did a really good job getting the product out. I did my best to pay everyone more than what they asked for on the project. There was a very notable time back in February of 2023 where your channel was hacked. And according to a, a wiki article, you were hacked when someone posing at a, as a sponsorship agency sent you a Trojan virus disguised as a PDF contract. And the result of that was the hacker posting nine tutorial videos that provided links to, to crack software. I mean, like, how did that feel of the uncertainty of your, your channel after building your lifelong dream? For one, I'm shocked that there's a wiki article about the <laughs> hacking of my channel. That's uh. That's news to me, but it was definitely like really scary. I think if you ask any of my friends or family around that time, like I was freaking out. Um, luckily, YouTube was kind of quick, but also three days and not knowing if you're going to have a career is terrifying. Yeah, I, I think if anything, it kind of opened up my eyes to like trying to find other like revenue streams and other places that people can find my content. Yeah, that's definitely understandable. But. In the same year, 2023, you covered some, you know, some FNF, some My Singing Monsters, but you covered this one indie horror game called Garten of Banbana, a mascot indie horror game that's been, uh, you know, it's been criticized for its subjective quality compared to its massive appeal. But one day, you, you know, he posted a tweet about, you know, what if I remade this game in one week without any game design experience? I believe you spent your entire spring break remaking Garten of Banban into this game called Reincarnated. 
how was that process of learning game development in just seven days and remaking this game? Growing up and even now, I have a tendency to just throw myself into stuff. And I'm like, what if I just try to learn Unreal Engine? And I just basically spent an entire week waking up, looking at YouTube tutorials, putting this game together. It was weird because it didn't really take anything out of me. I was like really passionate about this. I was working ungodly hours on this thing. And I think the uh, urgency of the challenge really helped me push and learn quickly. But yeah, that, that's been insane for the channel. Yeah, for sure. You know, you've had like around a year of game design experience now. And, you know, looking back on Reincarnated is, you know, knowing what you know today, would you do anything differently with that game? Yeah, the entire game would be scrapped and I'd rebuild it from the ground up. Everything about that game is just terrible. A lot of the environments are just really dull. And I'm very proud of the project, um, but knowing what I know now, it could be optimized better. We could be doing cooler visual stuff than what we have in that project. That's interesting. So transitioning from Reincarnated, a, a fan game based upon a pre-existing horror game, you uh, then decided to go on your own with a small team and create your own original indie horror game called Indigo Park. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Are you excited for this? <laughs> oh. I am. I'm very excited about this section. So could you just explain the premise to get those excited for its approaching release date? So Indigo Park is a first person exploration mascot horror game that takes place in an abandoned theme park. Think of some of the more popular theme parks, which I will not name for legal <laughs> and copyright reasons. If they were super technologically advanced and then left alone for years. The biggest appeal we have for the game is as you explore the world, there is a character named Rambly the Raccoon, uh, who was the park's main mascot, who will follow you around the park and exist on screens and advertisements and billboards and kind of guide you along trying to help you navigate the park. Congratulations! I'm Rambly, Rambly the Raccoon. And it's my job to make sure your experience here at Indigo Park is the most fun it can be. Just hop on over to the registration center to your left, where our friendly assistant will help you begin your adventure in the park. Hi, I'm Rambly, Rambly the Raccoon, and it's my job to make sure your experience here at Indigo Park is registered. Let me just get a good look at you. I, I can't lie, like there are parts in chapter one where I get kind of teared up interacting with Rambly because it's I, I just like him as a character so much. He's he, he's really solid. I like him a lot. Oh, it's wholesome, man. <laughs> We're doing this in a chapter based system. So if you compare it to something like, uh, say, Poppy Playtime, where the first chapter was about like 45 minutes max, if you've never played the game, that's about the time frame we're going for. Uh, the second that we have a confirmed release date, you guys will know it. Definitely in 2024. Like it's, uh, it definitely won't go all the way to 2025. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. <laughs> yeah, no problem. We got a question from our boy, Penkaru, a fellow content creator. He's wondering if you have any advice for, you know, YouTube beginners or game developers just starting out. So my advice for YouTubers in particular, just be open to change because you never really know what's going to pop off. I mean, that's exactly how I found Friday Night Funkin'. It's very much a trend based job. Stuff like game development or art, if you have a computer, you can start today. Start watching tutorials and do your best to create something. As far as like balancing that with school and work and stuff, I mean, it's just finding time when you can. Give it a shot because that's all you can really do for yourself. Dang, he's speaking like a like a modern philosopher. Do you know the future plans for Unique Geese one to five years from now? I would really like to get the Unique Geese brand to a point where we're like a game studio and like multimedia production so that it's less about me and more about the stuff that we make. I still really like the personal aspect of being able to stream uh, and do these kinds of videos where I'm like talking to the to the chat. And I think we definitely continue that, but I'd like to do bigger projects as well. Yeah, dude, you got the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> But I did save the best question for last from Turtle Balls. They ask, would unique geese eat a geese? Uh, like a like a single goose? A, a geese. Uh, no. Why not? I am around them a lot when I go on walks and stuff, and I don't really want to eat one. No is my final answer. Well, when you're walking and you see a, a geese, 
do you, you, yeah do you like speak to them like telepathically as unique geese no they kind of scare me they're like snakes on a duck's body <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say you are the most unique geese out of all all the geese thank you very much you're welcome Thank you for watching and subscribe here to Mediterra. And of course, subscribe to Unique Geese. Is there anything else that you'd like to mention to the viewers at home? No, uh, 